Hello and welcome to another tutorial by Classic Craft Studio. I'm Rebecca and today we're going to be talking about water soluble fabric. So water soluble fabric adds a whole new dimension to your free motion embroidery. Um, with this material you can pretty much make freestanding thread lace. So today we're going to be going through the basics of how to use this, fabric, this material. Uh, next week I'll take it a bit further and we'll show you how to do 3D sculptural tutorial. Um, tutorial. But for this week, we're just going to keep it simple and just make sure that you've got your techniques down. So to start with the thinnest needle that you possibly can find, I'm using a size 60 needle. You can use an 80, which is your standard needle, um, but you want it to be as thin as possible because your water soluble fabric is it's almost like a plastic. So it perforates really easily. Um, so your thinner needle will help slip between the stitches nicely and will be less damaging to the actual fabric itself. For your embroidery hoop, you want to have something that fits together really securely and holds your fabric very tightly. So if you don't have one of these plastic embroidery rings that have got the little ridges inside them, then maybe look at um, wrapping your wooden hoops with a bit of bias binding just to increase the grip on your actual hoop itself. So you're going to start by drawing your design. Um, because your, your water soluble fabric is quite transparent, it's easy to see it's sort of like a tracing paper. So as long as you're underneath your design that you're copying is nice and dark, you won't have any problems um, copying it onto your actual fabric. One thing I will note, will tell you, is that um, when it comes to drawing your design onto the water soluble fabric, make sure you're doing this either with a water soluble pen or with a pencil. So as you'll see um, in a, a little bit, this I drew my design onto my fabric using a, a ballpoint pen. So I was lucky with this design in that I used a blue port point pen and I was doing black thread, so it didn't show up. But on some of my other designs, I used a red ballpoint pen and then stitched with yellow thread. So it, it I, luckily I was doing birds, so I can still make it work. But yeah, it's, it is something to bear in mind that your the pen that you're marking with can show up onto your actual thread design. So pull your fabric as, as tight as possible inside the hoop and just tap it to make sure it sounds like a drum it mustn't it must give off a very drum sounding tap when you tap it uh, it mustn't be a, a soft sound so yes yeah, so tight and make sure that screw is as tight as it can possibly go so yeah as you can see here i'm using the blue ballpoint pen which like I say, I was just lucky in this design. I'd forgotten this little, <laughs> little use, useful little tidbit of information, but it actually does make a difference what, what color the pen is that you draw your design if you're using a lighter color thread than your, than your pen is. So I've got embroidery thread on the top and I've got an ordinary sewing cotton in the, in the bobbin thread. And they are matching colors because for this project, you're going to be able to see back and front. Now, with the, um, the fine needles like that, my needle threader doesn't always, doesn't go through them. <laughs> so, I have to thread by hand. Right, so, matching colour top and bottom. Doesn't have to be embroidery thread, it can be ordinary thread on the bottom. It's up to you. both our threads to the top. So how I like to do is I do a single outline, single stitch outline, do all my inner rows and then I go over the outline again with the circular stitches. So from now on I'm going to just going to do a line of straight stitching on all the lines.
So it was a single line going up, and then as I'm doing the, ve the veins of the leaf, it's actually ending up being a double line because I'm going back along those same lines again. my middle line again because I want that to be quite a prominent line in my design. Right, now we're going to do our outline. So again we're going to make these tiny little interlinking stitches. So literally doing circles with the, um, with the with the needle and the thread, interlinking circles. sure that I'm always trapping the, the points where the veins touch the outer, the outer leaf. Those need to be very well encased to hold it all together. off our threads and we're just going to make a little loop to because we're going to turn these into earrings. So, let's stitch a little loop to hang the pin. Here's the two leaves.
So when it comes to dissolving your fabric, which is great fun and so satisfying, there are a few things that you need to remember and you might want to think about before you begin. The first thing is how stiff you want your item to be. Because the more, the longer you soak your, your finished item in the water, the softer it, your thread lace will become. So if you just quickly dip it in the water and then pull it out and then let the backing dissolve while it's the item is out of the water, you'll end up with a much stiffer item. So if you're making textile jewelry or if you want it to be um, used in an artwork where it, you need it to be slightly stiffer, then use this technique. If you're going to be using your thread lace as an accent on clothing, then I'd suggest that you leave your design in, in the water for one or two minutes longer, and this results in a much softer thread lace. Right, so as you can see, this technique has got so many different uses and possibilities. Today was just the most basic, straightforward beginning of the steps. Next week, like I said before, we're going to go into 3D sculptural work. And then after that, I'm planning to do a big artwork that's going to involve felting, free motion embroidery, um, thread lace, putting it all together to make one big artwork. So I hope you'll join me for that too. So don't forget to subscribe and to like this video. And also just to let you know, I've been working on an Etsy shop, which is Classic Craft Studio NL. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description. So if you want to have a look at my work, you can see the things I make to sell. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.